Yeah, I see them in the streets struggling. Young, dumb, and thugging. Give a fuck about nothing. Stuck at rock bottom trying to come up on something. Pumping from sundown to sun. What's up, guys? Shoot Joss here. Welcome back to my channel. We are back with another reaction to Peaky Blinders. This is season four, episode three, Blackbird. And I already discussed it a little bit during my recap for the last episode, but I feel like the last episode more or less was a setup episode. It wasn't bad by any means. It was just a little bit slower. And obviously, the characters are still grieving and mourning the loss of John, as are we. So it's completely understandable but there was one scene near the end of the episode between Luca and Tommy which really excited me for what's to come because they basically said to each other like hey we're gonna have a civil war there's gonna be no kids no civilians no innocents I'm coming for you you're coming for me let's just keep it civil and we're gonna do this from here on out and yeah that got me super excited because I've never seen like people go at each other like that keeping it so civil well basically saying I'm gonna kill you and your entire family but hey let's leave everybody else out of it so yeah I'm excited for what's to come from here on out I think I'm ready to just jump right in and check out this episode if you guys are looking for my full reactions to the show the link to my patreon is down in the description below if you're not already subscribed to the channel now's a very good time to click that button down below smash the like button while you're there with that said, let's jump right in. Let's check it out. Let's go. All right, all right. Still on the coke, eh? What do you got? Bradley, Foreman. Oh, you don't see that man over there. Many have done this type of work before. They're mostly foremen from down Worcester way. But I'll show them. Hungry men learn fast. Right, on you go. Dirty scats! <laughs> dealing with you and your ugly workforce are now under the protection of the peaky fucking blindness there it is mr gray yes send him in it's your mother send her in oh his other mother i read about it in the paper we haven't seen her since he left you want me to go away yes He used to love these. He still has a soft spot for her. She did raise him, right? I kind of forgot that he, like, he had his own life before. Oh, come on. It wasn't as lavish. Oh, I'm expecting time. As being a Peaky Blinder, but it was still a life. Transition to his other mother. His real mother. Always prepared. Ada, how long since you've had a fuck? What? Been what? Two years with me, so I made a New Year's resolution to change the situation. Damn! Anyone particular in mind? Just me and someone unsuitable. So this is just to make business official. Your official return to the company payroll. Mm -hmm. So no more talk of New Year's resolutions. Or Tommy might change his mind. I think Ada's trying to tell me to behave myself. Yeah, behave yourself. Behave myself or what? Behave myself or fucking what? I have killed a man. Don't say I it aloud. I have found a son. I have nearly lost a son. I have nearly lost my own life. She's been through it. I will accept my job back, but I will not behave myself. Oof. Lizzie just had to watch all that. Why are you here? You all right? You Walking all right? with determination. Yes. Everything's fine. Lovely to see you, but I'm late for a meet. They can wait. Oh! You want to do this? Yeah. Why not? I thought you were the boss. I'm not fucking boss. I'm not used to this sort of yeah. side from Linda. Right. Before we start this extraordinary general meeting, what the fuck is Arthur? Mr. Kilpis! Fuck off! Step off, come into the paint shop! Oh, yeah! You're chucking paint around! We don't deal with it, man! I'm fucking busy! <laughs> what was all that about? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Came out of nowhere. In this sinful place, there will be temptations. It's my responsibility as your wife to help you resist. In the words of my sinful Catholic mother, keep his bulls empty and his belly full. God rest her soul. <laughs> Where have these women gone? You have to come to the paint shop immediately. Please. Sorry, ladies. There's no smoking in here. Yes, love. We know. <laughs> Could you get me That's another? We should wait for Arthur. Arthur's not here, Ada. We need Luca Changretta dead. That's it. All those in favour of giving the photographs to Mr. Gold, raise your hand. I don't know if I get a vote, but Arthur's not here, so I better get a vote. It will be done. There's a devil inside Arthur's gonna go off. Look at his, like, stance. You 
music needs to stop though so I can put this on YouTube. Does he know who he is? Fuck you, I'm fucking revolution! I'm fucking mess. Need more security. Oh no! No! Oh, if we fucking lose Arthur. Bash his skull in. Yup. Grab the gun. Yeah, he knows what he's doing. Yep, that'd be such a shitty way to go. Ah, to Shelby, Angora Gamma. I killed two of our men and complain about your fucking belly. Yep, even more need for revenge now. With respect. With respect. You raised it. You open your mouth. Open your fucking mouth! You don't fucking talk to me about with respect! What do you have? I'm the right one after Amy. Arthur Shelby killed her son in a boxing ring four years ago. Oh no! I got beat. She would do that for us. I remember her. Okay, if you're not gonna show up for the family mating, let someone know. Thought you were dead. There's 15 fucking Italians out there. No, there's not. There's 13. There's 13. That's why he couldn't show up. Well, he was doing other stuff too. Oh, I did it. Not fucking Abraham Gold or his punch drunk son, but me. I got cleaned up at Aidas. If you tell me, you took a vote in my absence. All right. Calm down. It was me that shot the old man. Yeah, out of mercy. No. No, John's dead. It's He's not his fault, of though. How do the men get in the factory? I need to know. To be honest, it's kind of John's. Through the back fucking door that was supposed to be locked and bolted, some bastard guide me up. Daddy's home, am I? Yeah, I'm all right. Look, Daddy's home. How's Polly? I mean, it was her idea, wasn't it? Hmm? The Japanese silk. You kept me away from that fucking meeting. Tried right, to stop me from voting. Oh, I didn't even catch on. She's slick. I don't want you dead. Polly doesn't want you dead. Let Mr. Gold do the killing for money. Watch. Now fire it into the fireplace. Please. You just put Billy to bed. She's very persuasive. And we'll go to bed. Do anything you like. That's all it takes. Hand it over. Oh. Oh. Right, so there are rules between a man and a woman. Oh, I'm gonna do it. Blackbird, blackbird, singing the blues all day. That is the episode title. Now I began to feel I brought up the possibility of them two having a thing. I've come to make an improved offer. Have you ever seen any of the men in this photograph before? What? <laughs> You're a member of the Sedgford Communist Party. I'm told two Italian men attended a meeting recently. It's a matter of national security. You know, when this business began, I did some research on you. Turns out I know someone who used to know you very well. Kitty De Rossi. You were in love with Kitty's sister, Greta De Rossi, before the war. Do you remember Greta De Rossi? I don't think I've heard these names. Very thorough research. Greta died at the age of 19, and after she died, you went away to war. She said that the sweet boy who left never came back. Is he gonna fire the bullet? Arthur! Didn't realize they were so close to each other. Arthur! Where is he? He fired the bullet. It's all right, brother. Tommy's not gonna be happy with her. God spoke to him, not me. Are we expecting somebody? used to come here. She went for hours for me. Going back yeah. to Greta. Some girl. Are you kissing her or me? You. 
That was like a sentimental fuck spot, I guess. Oh no, is this Polly going to have some fun now? She didn't mention that resolution. Hopefully she doesn't sleep with the enemy. Women alone are not allowed at the bar. Will someone be joining you? What do you think? She knows his face now. This is public enough, no? Yes, the boy in the hospital's out of bounds. And I'll ask you to spare Finn and Arthur. And Madame for what? Tommy Shelby. She's giving up Tommy? This has to be a setup. My mother. My mind is racing right now. My mother knew your mother. Did she tell you that John and Arthur spared her life? When Tommy wanted to dead. You should have killed her when you had the chance. Mm. John was a good boy. Everything comes back. You take Tommy. Spare the rest. I can't believe this. What do you say? Hmm? I don't dance anymore. Yeah, that's a shame because you're dancing with me. Ooh. Dancing with the devil. All right, guys, that was Peaky Blinders, season four, episode three, Blackbird. And this was a really good episode. I don't want to say that there's ever been a bad episode of the show because I've loved this entire series so far, but I enjoyed this episode a hell of a lot more than the last one. I feel like the last episode was almost a little bit too slow. It wasn't a bad episode by any means, but just in terms of pacing, it definitely slowed down the momentum, especially after that amazing season premiere but this episode got things back on track in my opinion i really enjoyed it there's a lot to discuss as usual but i think i want to start at the very end i definitely want to discuss linda and arthur as well because they had a major focus during this episode but the very end my mind is racing right now i don't know what to think like it's going in so many different directions like maybe she did this because of that or she has this plan and then she did this as a part of the setup Obviously, I'm referring to Polly and Luca at the bar at the very end of the episode. I was not expecting that because initially, I guess this was planned from even the very beginning of the episode when Polly was telling Ada that she wanted to go out. It was part of her New Year's resolution to get laid, basically. Was that part of her plan that she was always intending to meet? Luca at the bar at the end of the episode and she was just kind of covering her tracks and her bases right from the very beginning because wow this goes back even further when was this all set up did she write back to him when she received that that card initially with the black hand being dealt to her I'm a little bit confused where this was all set up but obviously that took place off screen they did not want us to know exactly what was going down at the end of the episode who she was meeting with and why but we did see at the end of the episode, she was meeting with Luca. She met with Luca when I, was, I thought she was just there to find a love interest or at least for the night, uh, a little bit of a fling, you know? And then when he walked up to her, I was like, oh, fuck. They're not going to do a hit on Polly right now, are, are they? And then when she just had a conversation with them. Like, it was fully intended. She knew it was coming. And so I was caught off guard when I thought she was going to be the one caught off guard. That whole conversation was very interesting. Obviously, the families go back because of his mom. And I forgot initially exactly who his mom was. And then it was brought up about, or probably brought up like, did your mother let you know that John and Arthur actually saved her or f let her go when they were supposed to kill her based on Tommy's orders? And now going back to that, that's freaking crazy. They really should have listened to Tommy at the time. I can't believe that came back because at the time when he gave the orders to kill the teacher, the older woman even i was saying i almost want to go back and see my reaction to it now because i'm pretty sure i was saying like no just let her go she's innocent she has no part of this like if you got to kill the guy kill the guy but like mr changrietta but for as far as the missus the teacher like especially if she was there like and taught them in school when they were kids just let her go and now coming back to this or the fact that she came back and relayed the info oh my god they should have just killed her I really want to go back and see my reaction to that now because that is so crazy. And the fact that John is the one that got killed first because of this all happening, oh my God. She should have at least said like, hey, if you're going to take out their family, at least spare the two that spared me, John and Arthur, kill everybody else. <sighs> but here's where I'm a little bit confused now because Polly, on one hand, obviously Michael comes first. She's going to do what she has to protect her son. I get that. But at the same time, is she really willing, or is she really willing to give up Tommy in order to protect her son? Well, I guess this, this is crazy to me because she does. She did ask to protect Arthur and Finn as well, saying that like they're they're good boys. Just take Tommy, but oh my God, I don't know if I want to believe this. That 
maybe this is somehow part of Tommy's plan as well, where he's saying, yes, go in there, tell Luca that you're giving me up. Oh, there's so much chess being played right now that I don't know what to believe, especially because of what occurred this episode with this meeting being set up between Luca and Polly taking place off screen. I'm pretty sure it had to be taking place off screen. That leads me to believe that more stuff is happening off screen that we're not being shown just to kind of keep us in the dark. So I don't know if initially that was set up off screen and then also set up off screen. Tommy was telling her to actually go there and meet with them and then, yeah, play along. And then that's part of our plan. I really don't know what to believe right now. I don't want to believe that Polly is against Tommy, that she's just pure willing to give him up because at the end of the day, they're Peaky Blinders. You know, they got to protect one another. I feel like... If you're a Peaky Blinder, you're protected for life by the by the others. So that's why I'm kind of confused. I don't want to believe that she's actually giving him up. Yet at the same time, she could be, and I could just be completely naive and <laughs> thinking that she's actually staying loyal to Tommy. Oh my God, I don't know how I feel about this, what to think about it. Because if she's not staying loyal to Tommy in the long scheme of things, that definitely changes my perception of the Polly character. And I don't want to say that because... I really love Polly. Like, she is freaking awesome. And even this episode, at the very end, I was concerned for her safety. But then, two seconds later, into the discussion with Luca, she's giving up Tommy. So, I don't know, guys. I'm a little bit concerned for Tommy now. And I'm a little bit confused about how I feel about Polly if she is, in fact, giving him up. <sighs> We're going to have to wait and see how this all plays out. Because I refuse to believe, as of right now, in this instance... Or in this instant that she's actually giving up out. Am I foolish? Should I should I just be believing what is being shown on screen? But I don't want to. I refuse to believe it. But yeah, we're, we're just going to have to wait and see how this all plays out. But I did want to discuss Linda and Arthur as well. I freaking love Linda. She's amazing. And you guys already know I love Arthur as well. But Linda... She's changed. They were even saying this episode, she's starting to swear now. She was taking the gambling bets. And then <laughs> one of my favorite scenes was Polly when she actually said like, no, Linda initially said, oh, Arthur said yes. Tommy said yes. So it's okay. And then Polly responded right away. Did God say yes? <laughs> that was the perfect response to Linda. But man, she is slick. What she did to, with Arthur this episode, when she actually showed up. And I even said, before I knew what she was actually up to, when she was walking in there to Arthur's office, I'm like, damn, that's a woman walking with determination. But she knew exactly. She had a, a game plan in her head. She was just going there to keep Arthur busy so he didn't actually show up for the meeting. And I didn't even put two and two together. Obviously, it was found out afterwards that Polly gave her the idea for her to do that. But man... For her to actually go through with it, she is freaking crazy. She has come so far because at first she just seems like a, a sweet, innocent child of God. Yet there she is. She's pulling strings. She's another puppet master. So to see what she did with Arthur, she knew exactly what she had to do. But I, I also understand she's just doing what she what she had to do to keep him safe. So I, I completely understand her intentions and her motivations right now. That's her husband, the father of her child. She has nothing but goodwill and good intentions for him, even though she's kind of lying to him and doing some slick stuff to keep him busy and keep, and keep him out of trouble. It's kind of crazy what she has to do. And then she was begging him for that one bullet with Luca's name on it, for him to just fire it and be done with it. Hire, what's Littlefinger's name in the show? Aberama Gold, I think it is, something like that. Aberama, Aberama I think it is. I've never heard that name before in my life, so that's why it's, this is all new to me. But she's basically just saying, like, hey, with these changed modern times, you don't have to be the one that actually pulls the trigger. You can pay these men to do it. That's why they're here. Just leave it in their hands to deal with it. I don't trust that, though, because Arthur is probably Tommy's best soldier. And then at the end, though, she convinced him. He fired that bullet. Obviously, his headspace is not in the best right now, best space right now, because he's back to drinking. We saw at the very beginning of the episode. He's back to doing coke. Yet again, that killed me. I died a little inside when I saw that. Obviously, he's fully back. He kind of, He's kind of doing what he has to do to keep his head in the game and be focused on the business, even though he was more on the family side of things before. So I understand he's doing what he has to do, but I don't like it because... It's like he's fallen, you know, like he's come so far and now he's fallen off the wagon once again. But yeah, Arthur is doing his best, I guess. At the very end, she did convince him. He did fire the bullet. At first, Tommy came running. He's like, oh shit, did they take a hit out on him? Like, did they just take out 
Arthur, but no, he just fired the, the bullet on his own. I don't know if that's a good thing right now. Obviously, we want to believe that if he's, if he's not the one that's going to be doing the killing, he's going to be staying closer to home, staying closer to Linda. That is technically a good thing, but I feel like this definitely jeopardizes his life if he's not willing to kill right now because they're in a full-on blood war. Like, they need Arthur to be able to kill and be willing to kill in a moment's instance, just like earlier this episode when the hit went out on him. I swear to God, I was so scared because... I think it was the start of the season because now I'm fully on edge every time that they walk into a scene or a public place. Even when Polly walked to that bar at the end of the episode, I was like, all right, that guy has a mustache. Is he Italian? So that's why I'm so on edge right now. And that's why the Peaky Blinders need to be on edge right now because these hits can be coming at any instant. It's freaking crazy. I kind of forget where I was going with that, but I definitely wanted to bring it up because the hit out on Arthur, like that was crazy. I sincerely thought that he was dead this episode because of what went down in the season premiere and John being taken out. And now that, I think that's where I was going with that point. But because of what went down in the season premiere, I am so on edge right now. But the other thing that I liked this episode was the research being done between Jesse Eden and Tommy. I feel like there's a connection now between them. I don't know if there's gonna be like a love affair or something that comes of that, but I feel like they now have more of a relationship or a bond based on, I guess their broken love's past. Like they both been through it and based on the war, or because of the war, they both lost the love of their lives or they both changed them. So I don't know, that was very interesting stuff. They both did their research on each other. I'm definitely intrigued. I wanna see where their bond goes because I feel like there is a bond there, but at the same time, she did burn the picture of the Italian. So I don't know, they it felt like they did take one step forward, maybe two steps back. We shall see where their relationship goes moving forward because there's only three episodes left for the remainder of the season. So I'm fully expecting a lot to go down with the remainder of the season. But uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna end it there. Also, actually, before I end it, I did want to bring up Lizzie as well, because I did mention it during the episode, but obviously Tommy took, I almost forgot to mention this, Tommy took her to, I guess, a special place with, I think it was Greta, who Jesse Eden had brought up. And I kind of feel bad for Lizzie, because even though I do feel like Tommy has a, a soft spot in his heart, a special place in his heart for Lizzie, she'll never have his full heart or his full love based on who she is, who she was. I feel like he's always going to take care of her and look out for her. But if she's wanting something more, she's never going to get that from Tommy. I could be wrong. Like, who knows? Maybe she will end up or they will end up together. But I just feel like she's never going to get that real love from Tommy. He's not necessarily using her, but he kind of is at the same time because he knows he's never going to give her his love. So I don't know. It's just a, it's hard to watch sometimes. I kind of feel bad for both of them. But I don't think that they're eventually going to wind up uh, together. I feel like they're just more or less using each other to kind of grieve and just deal with things. But yeah, I definitely wanted to bring up Lizzie before I ended things because she's definitely an important character now. She's come so far. I gave her a shout out already either at the end of the last season or at the start of this one. I think it was the start of this season, actually. So yeah, I definitely love her character as well. If you're a Peaky Blinder, I pretty much love you. Let's just say that. But yeah, also Finn, I should probably bring him up as well. There's so much that went down this episode, so I already know that I'm forgetting a lot. But Finn, he became a man this episode, so I don't know if he's going to play a bigger role moving forward. It's kind of funny what the ladies did to him. They made sure he became a man this episode, but Tommy kind of said to him, like, hey, I know that's not the way you wanted things to go down, but that's kind of the way that things are. Like, everybody's being dealt a shit hand. <laughs> just be a man and just deal with it. And obviously, he kind of just had to take it on the chin and... It showed that he's a good kid, though, as well, because he didn't want that. He, if Some kids, I guess, they're just like, hey, sex... Any girl I can get, let's hook it up. But for him, he's like, I don't want it like that. So it just shows that Finn is still a good kid, even though he deals with the criminal side of things as well. Like he's a full on Peaky Blinder member. But uh, yeah, those are the last two I wanted to bring up, Lizzie and Finn, because I feel like they definitely played important parts of this episode. But I think I'm gonna end it there, guys. As always, definitely let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments down below. If you guys can like subscribe, it really helps my channel grow. Till next time, I am out. Enjoy your day. Peace. Well, I didn't smoke enough for you, didn't drink enough for you, wasn't fun enough for you, wasn't good enough for you, damn. You play me like a yo-yo and shit, well, I am not the one to